What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the Outrider, a modified YT2400 light freighter used by Dash Rendar. Manufactured by Corellian Engineering Corporation, the same people that made the Millennium Falcon and the CR90 Corvette, just to name a few. An unmodified YT2400, fresh off of the shipyard, cost 130,000 credits, just over the cost of two TIE fighters, and 30 grand more than a new YT1300. At a length of 21 meters, or 69 feet, it was about 6 Chewbacca's shorter than the Falcon, and at a width of 26.7 meters, or 88 feet, it was only one Ewok wider than the Falcon. At a height of 8.9 meters, or 29 feet, it was almost the same height as an ATST. Stock, this ship could reach a top speed of 800 kilometers per hour, or 497 miles per hour, making it as fast as the Minstrel class space yacht, but with modifications, it could reach a top speed of 1,150 kilometers per hour, or 715 miles per hour, giving it the exact same speed as the Z-95 Headhunter. This 350 km per hour increase was achieved by installing military-grade Kongar KG Defender Ion engines, but he also added a Suro Sub Y2TG hyperdrive, bringing it from a Class 2 up to an incredible Class 0.75. The hull came reinforced with titanium instead of durasteel, but the targeting computers and sensors were upgraded to make the two heavy dual laser cannon turrets and two concussion missile tubes way more accurate and deadly than what you would find on a stock YT-2400. Illegal black market tech was installed to scramble Imperial sensors, making it harder for Dash to get caught, but meant that if he ever was captured, he would certainly be executed. Interior space was adequate, and could provide for six passengers, though the Outrider was normally just crewed by Rendar, and his droid co-pilot, LEBO2D9, also known as Lebo, who helped to install some of those ship upgrades. The cargo space allowed for 150 metric tons, the same weight as 37 Banthas, and he would allot enough supplies to last for up to two months out in space. And in the case of emergencies, it came with one escape pod. As for its history, the YT-2400 was given to Dash early in his smuggling career by his Twi'lek crime patron, who was lovingly referred to as Uncle Vanya. He sets him up with a Rodian co-pilot, but he was green in more ways than one, and died in the first 20 seconds of their very first mission together. From there, he took the ship to Biblo Starport Tower 214, where a Celestin named Bulabo Huyan helped install those upgraded engines and hyperdrive. Later, these modifications would save Rendar's life, when sometime after the Battle of Yavin, the Outrider was carrying out a smuggling job that brought him through the Maul. Remember the Maul was a known smuggling hotspot, and the Empire was able to ambush Rendar, with him only barely escaping with a well-timed jump to hyperspace. The Outrider would not come out of this event unscathed, with this rush jump blowing out his hyperdrive and even the backup hyperdrive, causing Dash and his at that time Nautilin co-pilot Eden Vril to make an emergency landing on the luckily nearby planet of Tatooine. To help pay for repairs, he worked for a hollow star named Javal Charn, who was secretly supporting the Rebel Alliance, eventually leading Dash and his droid companion Lebo to begin taking contracts smuggling Rebel weapons. This brought the Outlander to Echo Base on Hoth, and he was actually there during the Imperial Invasion, which forced Dash to outrun Vader's fleet, codenamed Death Squadron, and navigate his way through the Hoth asteroid field. Later missions saw the Outrider team up with the Millennium Falcon to go on a mission to rescue Han Solo from Boba Fett, while the destruction of the Outrider came about in a battle over Coruscant with the leader of the Black Sun crime syndicate, Prince Shizor. It appeared that Dash and Lebo died in the explosion, but this was just an elaborate plot cooked up by Rendar so that he could end his time fighting in the Galactic Civil War, and by faking his death, he could return to a life of anonymity. So that's it for the Outrider and the YT-2400, and the only cool behind the scenes facts is that this ship was put into a scene over Moss Eisley and the special edition of Episode 4, and got a whole story around it in the video game, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, released in 1996. And this ship was brought back into canon, with its appearance in Iron Squadron, in the Rebels TV show. So that's it for the Outrider, but most important of all, remember, rebellions are built on smugglers, and the Force will be with you, always.